hey, I've been teaching on surviving economic calamity, and uh, I'm going to keep doing it. I mean, I, I believe uh, we are less than seven years. That's just my personal opinion. If, if it doesn't happen, then glory to God. If this nation repents, we can avoid certain things. And if uh, the church becomes salty again, perhaps we can even hold back uh, the hand of calamity. Um, God is love, God is merciful, uh, but God is just. And uh, I just sense in my spirit, we've just got some years to get ready as the people of God. Well, we're teaching these things, but I, I want to bring some practical stories to you as well. Hayward um, gave a testimony one night in Life Group that just captivated everyone there and it's in this very area and it made me think that there may be several stories like this out there from some of you so I'm gonna hunt these stories down and on occasion instead of you just hearing precept from me I want you to hear some practical testimonial things from others so Hayward God bless Amen. you share with us what, what right. happened in your life Whew. all right guys I have come to tell you hang in there don't lose hope keep drawing near God and seasons do change. Not just daily weather patterns, but seasons. Mm -hmm. The last six years, you know, we've been in a recession. I'm in landscaping, installation, design, whatever. But so landscaping is not a top priority. Uh, over the last six to eight, eight years actually, we had, I got no raises at work. I actually got cutbacks, got cut back in my commissions, lost my 401k, actually had to cash it in just to survive. Um, we even couldn't afford uh, central heat and air because our machine broke down. And so for years, we had window units in the summer, space heaters in the winter. And just recently, we got it back. But uh, it's weird because even the kids, they didn't know what it was like to even live. They couldn't remember. It was too far ago to live with the central <laughs> heat and air. They're like, this is nice. But uh, we did little to no going out. We drove as little as possible because of gas. So I, of course, I just prayed and prayed over the years thinking maybe this year it'll get better. And year after year, they kept going by. Things got a little harder, actually, each time. But throughout it all, God did do miracles. Um, little unexpected checks, uh, side jobs, hand-me-downs. I even got a, a great couch that we still have from a friend of mine. So that was good, and I saw that. But I, personally, I was still sinking deeper and deeper, getting closer to hopelessness. And I, uh, I hide it well, as I think a lot of us do. But, I mean, I've, I was still th always thankful for the little things God did. And I knew that those little things were like his signs t telling me, hold on. Hang in there. It'll, it'll be better someday. But still emotionally, I felt, I felt trapped. I felt at a dead end in life. And I even started accepting it, thinking I sh should be grateful for what I have and, and we should, and that others have so much less than <clears throat> even what I have anyway. And those are all really good, and I, I definitely believe in that. We should be thankful in all things. But God wants to do so much more in our lives, so much more. Um, just, I remember just five months ago, maybe less, I driving to work, having just excruciating thoughts and, of despair, and, and every, it's like every fiber of my being, every nerve was just aching and crying out. No, I, I can't do another day. I can't take it. When, when will it stop? I even had fleeting fantasies of just putting a bullet in my head and ending it once and for all. But of course, that was flow by because I said, I can't do that. I've got a wife and family. I've got you guys, my mom and dad. But it, 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 it got deep. Life was a landscape of gray. But every time God gave me strength somehow I kept driving to work and through the work day I'd see God's hand in, in many little things easing up my schedule so I can actually take a walk during lunchtime with him um, extending deadlines and, and things and one thing in particular he spoke and still speaks to me through is, is birds <laughs> little birds they're always fluttering around chirping happily so full of life and every time I saw the birds, his spirit would rise up in me and he would tell me how much he cared and provided for each little bird and so how much more he cared for me and for my family. And he said, just, just draw near to me. He says, draw nearer to me. So I did and I, and I still do. 
Every day I tell him, God, I need you more and more. I, I can't live this day. Every second I need strength. I need you, God. I need you. I need you. Just to get through another day. Well, last October, his fullness of time had come. And my boss approached me and, and my coworker about an opportunity. He wanted to simplify his life. And since my coworker Todd and I had pretty much built up that side of the company over the last 14 years, if we would be interested in buying out that half of the company. And we were in shock. And we both jumped at the opportunity. Of course, I'm thinking, I have nothing to my name. How am I going to buy <laughs> half of a company? But it was exciting and, and exhilarating. And you know, as it turns out, I didn't need to worry. Uh, I still haven't actually paid for the company yet. And it's almost March uh, that my ex-boss is letting us build up capital. And we've had a great year so far. It's winter and we're landscaping. And it's, we've had big jobs and small jobs and it's just amazing how it comes through. So, I mean, we can use that for the down payment. But just, just a few short months ago, I, was, I really was so close to throwing in the towel. I don't know if I ever would. I always think I, I wouldn't, you know, but you get those moments where it's just so close. But I was really feeling like, well, this is it, you know. Well, I'll praise you, God, no matter what, you know, but gosh, I wish there was more. But now I'm a co-owner of a successful company. I mean, God has done more than I could ever imagine. I, I never, I mean, me, a business owner, in a few mm. months you know, ago, I was about to just give it up. So through all this, I know I, I must never forget where I came from so I can help others in the same situation. And blessing has certainly come, but responsibility has drastically increased. <laughs> I, I need to always keep in mind that these other men and their families depend on this company that Todd and I are now running. So my prayer life continues. God, I need you more and more every day. I can't do it without you. I need you. But now it's for different reasons. And I'm here to tell you, hang in there. Don't lose hope. Keep drawing near God. And seasons, seasons change. He'll pull you through the, the hard times with little things, but then the season will change. And like Pastor says, you never know if you may be just 24 hours from a life-changing miracle. Yeah. And that yes. phrase has held me on yeah, <laughs> so man. much. So Amen. praise God and Amen. glory Amen. to him. Amen. 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 Thank you, Haley. <laughs> praise God. And I know all through that, uh, you know, Hayward had tight times and uh, times that uh, would certainly challenge any of us because I know some of the backstory. But, uh, you know, he just stayed true and faithful. And it is really true that sometimes, you know, God will put us through those things and lessons are learned and, and character is forged. And then you come out. And it was just remarkable that night as we were sharing because we thought... There, you are a moment from throwing it all in, and the next moment you're an owner of a company. So it really is quite a remarkable story. That's, I want you to hear how God does that. And, uh, and if you're in one of those seasons, just hang tough and be faithful, and he'll come through for you too. Amen.